be rich towards God. Have you ever tried to settle a money dispute or inheritance issue? Inheritance disputes are rarely ever easy to resolve, especially when the relatives or the close associates of the deceased benefactor cannot agree on who should get what and who should get the most. Why did Jesus refuse to settle an inheritance dispute between the two brothers? We saw that the heart of the issue was not justice or fairness, but rather greed and possessiveness. That's why in the gospel for today and even the readings for today, there is one question. Where is your treasure? Or what is your treasure in life? Or what do you treasure most in your life? In this little parable, Jesus proves our heart. Where is your treasure? Treasure has a special connection to the heart. Because the heart is a place of desire and longing. The heart is the place of will and focus. The thing we most set our heart is our highest treasure. That's why what do you treasure above all else? Now, according to your age, according to your lifestyle today, what do you treasure above all else? In the Gospel for today, it gives us two things that we must avoid. First, we must avoid loving possessions. Because oftentimes, loving possessions rather than loving our neighbor. We love our riches. We want material possessions. Sometimes, we want to get the money that to get, or sometimes we forget to respect the dignity of the person. The Ten Commandments were summarized in to two prohibitions. What are those? First, do not worship false idols. And second one, do not desire what belongs to others. These two prohibitions. And it's flip side of the two greatest commandments. Love God and love your neighbor. And Jesus warned the man who wanted half of his brother's inheritance. That's why Jesus said, beware of all greed. To covet is to wish to get wrongfully what others possess or to envy what God has given to others. Jesus restates the commandment, do not covet or do not desire. But he also states that the person's life does not consist in abundance of his or her, her own possessions. That's why St. Augustine has a commentary in this gospel for today. He said, Greed wants to divide, just as love desires to gather. That's why if you have these disputes in the family, you know what is the root cause. Greed. But if there is harmony, if there is unity in the family, you know what is in the family. Love. What is the significance? When Jesus said, guard against all greed. Meaning, we must beware of all greed. So how do we heal that greed in our hearts? St. Augustine would say, let us fill ourselves with love. So that's why St. Augustine, he said, the opposite of greed is love. But this love sometimes do not um, think that this love is selfish. St. Augustine would like to emphasize that love must be selfless love. A love that is that, that you can give to others. When possessing love 
for our personal inconvenience to the Lord because of our brother just as that man did against his brother. But we must not use the same plea. Instead, because according to Augustine, he says, Master, tell my brothers to divide the inheritance with me. But rather we would say, Lord, tell my brother that he may, that he may have my inheritance. You see, you see the difference? If you have the inheritance, you would say, Lord, ask my brother to divide it. But rather, you must, you must say, Lord, let my inheritance be with my brother. I think it's difficult. <laughs> if you have this inheritance, that is, you have this past land. The second one that the gospel that we must that the gospel would teach us to avoid is not only about that we must avoid in emphasizing our riches, our material possessions, but the second one that we must not be possessed by our riches, meaning don't prioritize too much about our material possessions. Jesus reinforces this point with a parable about the foolish rich man. Why did, why does Jesus call this wealthy landowner a fool? Jesus does not fault the rich man for his industriousness and skill in acquiring wealth, but rather for his egoism and selfishness. See, Jesus does not condemn the rich man or Jesus does not emphasize or Jesus does not give the fault to the person because he is rich. Rather, Jesus would emphasize set up about the riches but the selfishness of the person. Because the person oftentimes in our, in our life, we prioritize our material possession. That, that oftentimes we would say, oh, it's mine, all mine, and no one else. Everything is mine. That's the problem in the parable that Jesus would like us to see. This parable is similar to the parable of the rich man who refused to give any help to the beggar Lazarus, if you remember. The rich fool had lost the capacity to be concerned for others. His life was consumed with his possessions, and his only interests were in himself. His death was the final loss of his soul. What is Jesus' lesson in using material possessions? It is in giving that we receive. Those who are rich towards God receive ample reward, not only in this life, but in eternity as well. These two things that we must avoid, what are those? We must avoid loving possessions rather than loving our neighbor. The second one that we must avoid is we must that we, we are full because we are possessed by our riches. But the question, we go back again to the question, what do you treasure above all else? The first thing would say, everything is meaningless. Everything is vanities. That's why St. Paul in the second reading would emphasize that we must treasure our faith. Yes, we are rich or we have these material possessions, but if you do not have faith, your life will be meaningless. Our, if you want to have a good society, a good family, let Jesus be the center of your life. If you want to become wise in the eyes of God, if you want to become rich in the eyes of God, let us nourish our faith. Put Jesus, put God as a center of our life. Let God be our priority. Amen.